Education Public Radio. This is your 420 Radio News for Friday, October 4th, 2013. I'm Russ Belville. Government shutdown hits drug czar's office from RadicalRuss.com. According to the New York Times, the shutdown for the federal government has seriously impacted the Office of National Drug Control Policy, otherwise known as the Drug Czar's Office. Normally, the office is staffed with 88 full-time employees, but thanks to furloughs of non-essential personnel, just eight full-time employees are on the job. 85% of the Justice Department will be working, with the Drug Enforcement Administration still on the job, according to the DOJ. Considered non-essential? Justices pardon attorneys, some of whom may be considering appeals to release marijuana prisoners like John Nock, Paul Free, Larry Duke, William Deakle, and Charles Fred Cundiff, all senior citizens sentenced to life without parole who have all done at least 15 years' time in prison. While the government still considers DEA agents raiding gardens and busting potheads essential, other government functions considered not as important include pesticide regulators at the Environmental Protection Agency, food inspectors at Health and Human Services, and auto recall inspectors at the Department of Transportation. After all, in our government's estimation, we have so much more to fear from cannabis than pesticides, tainted food, and poorly made cars. <laughs> Switzerland decriminalizes marijuana, won't prosecute for small amounts, from Huffington Post. As of October 1st, possession of marijuana is decriminalized in Switzerland. Anyone over the age of 18 caught with 10 grams or less of the drug will no longer have to make a court appearance and will not have offenses entered into their permanent record. Instead, violators will have to pay a fine of 100 Swiss francs, approximately $110, then be on their way. The measure is expected to save money by cutting back on the 30,000 marijuana-related cases courts have had to handle each year. Penalties are now stricter for anyone caught selling to a person under the age of 18. The new law also provides greater resources to help children with marijuana habits. A 2013 UNICEF report found Swiss children are the world's second most likely to smoke marijuana, with just over 24% of 11, 13, and 15-year-olds having smoked pot in the last year. Erpenbach and Taylor's bill would legalize medical marijuana in Wisconsin, from Madison.com. Senator Joe Erpenbach, Democrat of Middleton, and Representative Chris Taylor, Democrat of Madison, are co-sponsors of a bill known as the Jackie Rickert Bill, which would legalize medical marijuana. With a Republican-controlled legislature, there is serious question whether the bill will gain any support. Erpenbach said opponents cite concerns that legalizing marijuana will be a slippery slope for patients and others to use the drug for recreational purposes. Under the measure, medicinal marijuana could be prescribed to patients with cancer, glaucoma, HIV-AIDS, post-traumatic stress disorder, seizures, severe pain and nausea, and muscle spasms. Taylor said the bill would allow patients to grow up to 10 marijuana plants and have up to 3 ounces in their possession. Patients who choose not to grow their own would be able to purchase medicinal marijuana with a doctor's recommendation at state-regulated, non-profit, compassion care centers. $10 million lawsuit filed in prisoner wrongful death case from HighTimes.com. The mother of a young man who died in a Linwood, Washington jail after turning himself in on a minor pot charge last year has given county authorities notice she intends to file a $10 million wrongful death lawsuit against them. The lawsuit announcement comes 15 months after 22-year-old Michael Safati died in custody and nine months after prosecutors decided not to file former charges against anyone at the jail connected to the incident. Safiati had an extreme allergy to dairy products in addition to other health concerns. He used marijuana medicinally to feel better, according to his mother Rose, but he had yet to register with Washington State as a medical cannabis patient. On July 2, 2012, Safiati turned himself into Linwood Police for a misdemeanor warrant for marijuana warrant for marijuana possession. He was dead less than one day later. The Snohomish County Medical Examiner's Office concluded that Safiati died from bronchial asthma stemming from a severe allergic reaction to milk products. Majority of Maryland voters support pot legalization from HighTimes.com. A new public opinion poll released today by the Marijuana Policy Project and the American Civil Liberties Union reports that 53% of Maryland voters support the legalization of recreational marijuana. These results were released just after Maryland's new ban on synthetic marijuana went into effect on the first of the month. The new poll also revealed that an even greater majority of Marylanders, 68%, back recreational pot decriminalization in which possession of less than an ounce would be a misdemeanor.
This has been your 420 Radio News for Friday, October 4th, 2013. I'm Russ Belleville. When we come back, we go behind the headlines and take a look at the other states across the country for which we have polling data on marijuana legalization, medicalization, and decriminalization, courtesy of our friend Paul Armentano at Normal. You're listening to the Russ Belleville Show on 420radio.org. We'll be right back. 